<laughs> you heard that huh? Like my voice shakes. I'm like, oh my right. god, guys. Ten. <laughs> Boom. Oh man, let's do this. Oh no, I don't know why. Hey, we fit, guys. We fit. Today. Man, this I has to be this. the hardest setup we ever had to do to fit in a, what is it, a five by five box? <laughs> Jesus. What? It's also like podcast. Ah, I think Most it's like eight by eight. Eight by eight? Hey, this, is, this is luxury in New York. <laughs> <laughs> this is about 3,000 in New York right now. A little loft right here. A little loft. <laughs> Hey, let me invite you over. But Tell Us Light Podcast, most authentic, most organic. Y'all already know how we do. Dusko, lovely Genesis. Mr. Same Jose Noe. Way. Mr. Pepe over here. Ready to direct our internal podcast as he does. I wasn't ready. I'm not ready to. Oh, I'm man. not ready. Let me tell you guys. We literally took probably an hour setting up. We were getting bullied by Genesis. That's first and foremost. I was the one being bullied, first of all. There's three of you against one. We it was quiet. Anything. It was we, quiet. We didn't say nothing. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, Pepe, let's get started, man. You, every time we do internals, they do really well. So I appreciate everybody sharing it, uh, commenting, using the sounds that they've been going very viral. Shout out, Pepe. Four million yep. views in one week. Appreciate you, man. God. Love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Hit it, start us off. Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> That's our airplane. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> that was a fucking airplane. Anyway. <laughs> we're going to keep it light today, right? We're going to keep right, it light. Let's, let's keep it light, man. Let's start, Please. No, we're going to start super light. Don't Please. worry, guys. You guys probably won't cry today. Maybe. Not today. I don't think so. I don't think we're on sad vibes today. No, nah, we're on toxic vibes. That's exactly what we're in, <laughs> we're we're in right now. We're on vibes. God. <laughs> Not yet. Second Not episode, yet. though, for sure. Stay tuned. How are you guys feeling today? Really? <sighs> Truthfully. Honestly. I'm hallucinating. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, but oh. I am running on like three hours of sleep and a full shift of patience. So, but we go in. We're doing it. Being I feel like we're all tired. In. This is my energy, first energy drink with six espresso shots. But uh, we're here. We're, I'm good. I'm in a good mental state. So, we good? Been a, been a heck of a month, been a heck, heck of a week. But with bad things that happen, there's always a, a little light at the end of the tunnel. And, we're here at therapy once again. This is free therapy, actually, so yep. I'm proud of that. Yep. I save a little bit of money. Cause <laughs> I got to talk about my sentimentals here. Get into them. Oh, no. We got to go to the <laughs> questions. We got to go Get into the them right now. Get into them right now. Acerca del way. The the little lever. Orale, orale, orale. Technical difficulties. Yes, que te lo <laughs> you need two hands on it. There you go. There you go. There you go. There slowly, go. slowly. Perfect. Yeah. Tighten it. Right there. Right there. <laughs> right there just right there. That's good. That's good. That's tight right there. Hold it. Caress nice. it. <laughs> no, no. Just, just close it. your eyes and rewind that back. <laughs> Hold up. Start again. Start again. Agarrame la. <laughs> Despacito. <laughs> All right. Let's get to this, man. How do you? Are you nervous, is, right? <laughs> it is. It is hot. Okay, go. First question. Right, let's do this. What's been your happiest memory this year? Bro. I'll go Levy. I'll go Levy. Right <laughs> off the bat, we said something like, damn. Happiest moment. Honestly, for me, I don't think I have one happy moment. I think I have, like, I feel like I really stepped out my comfort zone, my comfort zone this year. And I think that's what I'm happy about. I did a lot of things that I don't think I ever, would ever do. So I'm well, happy about that. What was that? What was like one thing um, that you got out of? Well, this public speaking. <laughs> 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 like this, just going out more, um, not really like knowing how to balance it more, I guess. The like isolation and having me time, but also having fun when, when needed, you know? So yeah. I think like overall this year, I think that was like my biggest thing was just to really enjoy life because honestly, I think the last couple like two years, like it was really hard for me to enjoy it and not feel guilty. And I think this time I was actually able to enjoy it and like be present. And I loved it. And like this year was honestly a big like success for me. That's good. 
clap, 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 clap. What about you? Uh, I feel like I've grew as a athlete and as a business owner and as a coach, just because I did bring in bring in another coach to help me out. I'm going to be traveling th- um, different states to go coach and handle. I've grew as an athlete as myself, as in like just progress in the gym the way I wanted to. And I feel like the stride from 2022, from 2021 to 2022 was kind of slow, even though I did start my business. But then 2023, since the start of January, I felt like it's picked up really fast, like with athletes, um, the progression, my name out there, and just being uh, all over the U.S., honestly, to be honest. like that's That's probably the best part. And then just having everything be official with, um, my LSC and then just like my your banner my banner yeah, yeah even yeah. though it's a little banner it's it's like official within the powerlifting world that's a big step for me solidify yep. yeah, I what? seen that today actually legit. on your thing I was like I oh know. it's legit clap, clap it up man clap it up for, for my guy over here putting amount enormous amounts of work hours on end so um, just to really like cap, cap it off on this is the questions that Pepe is asking like make sure y'all or asking yourself that same question and answer it in your own and leave it in the comments. We love to read them. Um, I think one of the happiest moments for me, it's kind of similar to like you guys, right? It's the growth, learning how to put myself first, finally, learning that not everything that comes our way is for me. Like I'm tired of trying to make everybody else happy as much as I want to. Then the day, not everybody's going to stay happy with what you're doing. And, you know, you may not, Whatever you're doing to put everybody up first, it may not make everybody happy, but... You can't please everybody. That's you right. can. So I think one thing that my mom had said earlier this week was we tend to look for the verification from people that don't even care about us. Like, I really want to make you proud, but at the end of the day, no matter how much I work, no matter how much I do, hours on end, days on end, like, it's never going to be enough. So why do I keep trying to make you happy or everybody else happy? So To add on to that, I feel like, if you're trying to make that person happy and that person isn't happy with themselves or proud of themselves, they can't be happy for you because then it's just going to be t- turning into envious. Like they're going to be envy of you because they're not proud of themselves or happy for themselves too. Yeah. I think that, that tends, that tends to go a lot with like relationships, whether it's with friends or even your partner, you know, when you get into a relationship with, with whoever, you know, you both started the same way and maybe your partner is growing at a rate that you're like, damn, and you're kind of set back, and you're like, damn, like, when is my time coming? As much yeah. as I want to applaud it for you, like, I need it to be me too, you know? So that's where, like, the envious comes in. I know we've all felt that at one point, right? I think I've seen something today where it, it made me emotional seeing the person I was praying for to have a better life and do good finally get, those, finally get that uh, gratification. So, you know, sometimes... As much as we want to win, you know, sometimes I know how we are. We get the gratification and that, um, I don't know, that warmth in our heart seeing our friends and loved ones win, even if it means winning without us. So what about you? What's your happiest moment or your best moment this year? The whole year, honestly. Kind of same like Jen. I grew a lot. I feel like I grew a lot as a person, you know. Emotionally, I'm in a way better place than I was a year ago, and I have to Thank the podcast pretty much, first and foremost. Thank you guys. Pretty much everybody that's associated with a podcast in any way, shape, or form. uh, They really embraced me. It was literally, you told me, right? October 9th was the first time I was ever in a pod. So a lot changed in a year. I went from being super shy, right? Uh, Not being able to even answer a question or like freaking out about answering a question to now, as crazy as it sounds, like, I'm over here hosting the internal pod. Yep. So I think uh, that this year changed a lot. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason, right? Like right? people land in your life for a reason. Events happen to your life, in your life for a reason. And whether it's a good thing or bad thing, like you have to just realize like it for a reason. Like this is not by mistake anymore. And I think that's like the growth part where, fuck, a year ago, fuck, we were not in the same position <laughs> mentally, know. emotionally, know. physically. Honestly, a year ago, I went MIA on social on everybody. I remember that. Yeah, because uh, I think the same time that 
Pepe came on the podcast, like that's when you started coming around more too. Yeah. And um, you know, a year ago, Jose failed at a four ninety five at nationals, and <laughs> now he reps it out for seven. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you know that it goes again. Now we're we're powered, empowered, and strengthened in areas where we were once too vulnerable and weak, where we probably couldn't even withstand that storm that was coming. And now, if for whatever reason it does come again, like fuck it, put me on. Like I'm ready for this today. So, damn, we're not even Definitely. at the end of the year. Ready flashbacks. Yeah, we're gonna I, run this back like two months de- in December. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> December thirty first. We're, we're gonna we're gonna release a podcast. We're gonna remember everything. Still two months to go. So a lot can happen. A lot, a lot can happen. Can happen. So too. now with that, with that question, what's scarier, success or failure? Ooh. Like there's like perspectives to that. For some people, some someone would say failure because, one, they don't know how to handle failure or how they're going to bounce back from it. Like at least for me, personally speaking, if I fail at something – I know what I can do to fix it. I'm going to analyze that, and I'm just going to do better this, the the next time around. Yeah. Because once, once you stop, that's when you actually fail. I think what's scarier about success is losing who I am as a person. Like, you know, you see people do the most to be successful, and that's hurting whoever comes their way. That means putting themselves first amongst other people. And when they look in the mirror after – Whatever that run looks like, you're like, damn, I really had to do all that just to be this now. And, you know, sometimes it just happens, right? Like, there's people are going to fall off. Things are going to happen. But, you know, I think that's what's scarier. This, the failure part, it, it's bound to happen. Like, you're going to end up failing at something at some point. It's not a failure. It's just a lesson. But the scarier part is who are you at the end of that journey, at the end of that road? Are you happy with that person that stands in front of that mirror or do you hate the, that person right because they say when you get to the top it gets really lonely and a lot of the people at the top they came in they go through a lot of mental health issues of suicidal thoughts of depression or whatever it is because you know maybe they don't have real friends they don't have people that genuinely love them because when shit gets tough i mean we've seen it people leave shit gets just a little bit rocky unsteady and people go and then the real people real, will stay in Success for a lot of people, how you were saying, it comes in different forms. To me, success is being able to enjoy the luxuries of my family, my friends. To other people, success is money. To other people, success is possessions. Fame. Yeah, and and I, I heard it before. Like For me, success would be how many people am I able to help along the road of, of what we're doing right now. The, the impact that we have on people, that's success. If we're able to help one, cool. If we're able to help a thousand, Amazing. So. It just takes a, on one person. Yeah, this is a guy perspective of success. You got to <laughs> give you got to give us your perspective on, on to success. To me, I don't think this. I don't think either or is scary. I think the most scariest thing is not even trying. It's not even taking that first step because it's like you wouldn't know failure or success if you're just like, oh, you know what? That's just too scary to start, mm. you know? So it's like. You wouldn't even know how failure is or success if you don't even take that first step. And I think that's the most scariest part because it's like then at that point, it's um, I'm looking for the word. You wouldn't even know. It's the land, yeah, the like, land of unknown. Yeah. It's like so you're going to end could've. up getting old and being like, damn, what if I did start that? What the if? What ifs. Yeah. The, what, the ifs. what ifs. Like that's the scary part. The what ifs. Because it's like you didn't even try. Do you think that revolves around the people you have around you also? Or is it just like a personal battle that you have to go through to not be in like in the what if part? Because obviously, like how they say, like, if you're around five winners, you'll be the six. Right. And if you're around five complacent people, you will be the six. Of course. And I think that I I think that has a lot to do with it, too, because I know having our us here, you guys around me, like it pushes me to be better and do better because y'all are succeeding, too. So. To be. I mean, we have this conversation all the time. Like, the people that don't want to work on themselves, like, like, bro, it's a year. We're in a year already. Like, what do you, what's the yep. difference between you now and you a year ago? What are yep. you doing? So, I think th- you said it perfectly. It's the scariest part is not even starting. Yeah. And getting old, and we are getting older, and it's just like, 
Damn, imagine I would have started this two years ago, a year ago. You're like, now what? Now it's not the time anymore. Or now someone else already did it, and now you're exactly. you're copying it. So Playing catch-up. You know, now we're yeah. leading the race. Me. <laughs> I think success, success is scarier. Or at least knowing success, you know? Because like you said earlier, everybody fails. Failure is just a part of life. Mm-hmm. So I feel like being at the top, being successful, and then falling might be scary. Like, that might be scarier than failing. Are I mean, you scared of falling and knowing you may not get up? Exactly. Mm. Yeah, that is scary. I just put this video out yesterday. Because it, it, it's, it's um, I was hearing it in Spanish. And, and sometimes it's like when you're battling through life and... You try and try and try, and every single time you get your ass knocked down, and you're like, what the fuck? Here I go, one more time. I'll get right, right back up, and then boom, another storm comes. Set, like, another hit. Boom, you fall again. You fall again. It's like, fuck. Some, what if I, like, I don't want to get up no more, dog. Like, I think I've tried way too hard for the longest time, and I'm not getting that that little piece of grace. Like, fuck it. Like, I can't no more. It is, it is what it is. Like, in Spanish, it just sounds a little bit harder, but it's like, bro, putazo tras putazo tras putazo. That like, one meme where it's yeah. like, um, I'm tired of this, Grandpa. He's like, what's well, till that bad? <laughs> if you don't know, fuck, go watch that movie right now. But yeah, like, I think that's the scary part is knowing that you're trying so hard and at the end of the day, you're still not getting that result. But you have to see the, the blessing in the redirection. Right? There's a reason why it's not working out. Maybe it's not meant for you. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be for you. Now, wherever you land in that at that moment, see your options. See where, now where you got to go. See where God needs to take you. But, damn, that is tough. Be at the top and then, boom, lose everything or fall down. And then not knowing if you can get back up. Or what if being at the top and it's still not enough? Oh. Oh. <laughs> damn. That's crazy. Where do you go, right, when you're at the top? What else do you need when you're up there? So what is enough? Like, if you go to the top, you have everything you want. Like, isn't that the most scariest part when you can literally have everything? So it's like, well, there's no satisfaction in anything. Don't you think that you can have everything, but you are you always miss something? It could be something small, but has the greatest effect on you. I feel like you wouldn't get the same satisfaction. Just the same way, like... We say, like, you know, me compared to, obviously, someone who has money. If I'm working so hard to get a car, I'm going to have more satisfaction when I get that car besides someone else who's just like, oh, here's 50 bands, you know? It's like, it's a different satisfaction because I'm like, dang, I worked so hard for this. And then someone else can just be like, here you go. Isn't it crazy when, like, you meet people that oh, money's not everything? Oh, I'm, I'm the happiest and I don't have money. I'm like... Damn, I don't have money and I'm fucking miserable. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's like, a, there's a deeper root to that. It's like, let go of the materialistic thing. Do you have love? Do you have friendship? Do you have a relationship with God or yourself? Like, some people who have it all, they don't even have that. That's why they're still searching for that. But do you guys think right now in the environment, society that we're in, we can't really be completely fulfilled if we don't have money in our pocket to take care of our bills? Because again, without money, we can't feed our family. Without money, we can't feed ourselves. And without money, you don't really have a lot of opportunity. So do you yeah, think... Money gives you opportunity. Yeah. So exactly. do you guys think money makes the world go round in today's society? Or do or, you think money buys happiness? To a certain point, yes. <laughs> I feel like... I would say yes. Yes, because of the same thing he just said. I can provide. I could help my family. I can help. I can... Worry not about surviving no more. Then I can worry about the, my actual, my true happiness. But money. that's just temporary happiness yeah. to a certain extent. Money buys comfort. Exactly. Exactly. I think we see a lot of people do a lot of things for money and become sellouts or do whatever for that. You know, if they tell you right now, hey, you can have a, like, there's a question, right? Like, you can have a million dollars right now, but tomorrow you don't wake up. Do you still want that? Or you can have a million dollars, but all your family has to go. That's crazy. That's crazy. Like, do you guys still here, want here, that? Here's nope. one right here. 
you get a million dollars, but someone in the world randomly dies. Damn. And then <laughs> you don't know that person. That's. You said randomly though. What if randomly it ends up being your family member, exactly, somebody, yeah. your closest friend? There's a chance. Yeah. You, you just know, absolutely not. Well, at least for me, I wouldn't. I tri- wouldn't take that. Trickle it back down, like with success that we've been talking about, with little bit of money. People change around you and you lose people around you because why? Oh, you think because you have that you're better than me. Yeah. No, it's not that I'm better. It's just, fuck, I've worked my ass off for this. Like, put it in perspective. Like, I'm going to say like in a third person or I think I'm I, correct. They didn't go to school. Don't, don't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you get all the success. You work hard. You get the car. You get the house. You're able to have nice dinners, nice things finally. Why aren't you the fuck happy for me? Why are you hating on me so much? I worked hard. You've seen where I started. You see where I got, where I had to go through to get this. Why aren't you truly happy for me? And it's understanding that some people are not happy about your success, how we said earlier, because they still don't have it. So they don't know mm-hmm. what that is like. Yep. Because what we're willing to go through, which is through howling back to get what we need to get, they're just not willing to sacrifice that just yet. And everybody has their timeline. Yeah. And so money does make the world go round. We've seen it. We've been around it. We see the the good sides of it and we see the bad sides of it. But depends on who you are at that moment that you're able to handle that that lump of money, that lump of success. Like here's a million dollars. Do we do what you want? It's like if you know how to really use it, right? Because you've been fuck. I, I I'm still happy to fucking win fifty bucks. <laughs> Twenty dollars, bro. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> like two gallons right there. Hell yeah, Tw- twenty dollars, bro. That that's one boy at Chipotle right now. Yep, I eat good. No, but I feel like money is almost the same way as alcohol. It amplifies who you are as a person. If mm. You're a calm person. You're just gonna be calm, cool. Mm. If you're a bad person, then that money is gonna amplify you being a bad person. Just money doesn't change you, but it just uh, weaves out who you really are. Bad times shows you who's really there for you. Yep. Same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Money, hard times, success. Oh man, it's really gonna show who you are. Who as you a really person. are. Yep. And it's gonna sh- and it's gonna show you who's really around you for yep. the right. The reasons. loyalty. Fire. Okay, but that's cool. That was good. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for the rants. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was a good rant. <laughs> I, I mean, I just that just set us up. Got the question. Really good question. All right, run it. Here it goes. No, 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 no. We can hold off on that. No, no, no. Ready for it. I'm ready no. for it. Do we now? Give it to him, baby. Nice no, and <laughs> slow. No. <laughs> That's a song. <laughs> I'm thinking about Rick James. Oh, right. <laughs> You're going a whole other route. That was 50 oh. Cent, bro. Come on. So back to success, right? If you knew that you'd be successful in anything, what would be the one thing that you would try? You can't fail, no matter what. Damn. Me as a business person, I feel like just getting into, like, the oil side. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm set, you know? But I'll let someone else answer because I need to think about this. I know, that's a good one. Hold up. If you knew you would succeed in anything. You can't fail. You can't fail. I what's think. yours? Hold up. What's yours? Yeah, what's yours? I'm going Wait. last. I'm asking the questions. I'm asking You got to go questions. first now. Absolutely not. We We're can come back turns. to this. <laughs> I think life. Surviving. It's just fucking cutthroat. These are days, moments that you're just like, fuck, do I really want to keep getting up? Do I, do I really want to go out there and see what hard work is? And, like, again, if you know you're not going to fail, then you, you're not scared of anything. Whatever comes my way, whatever needs to come, fuck it, bring it on. I'm ready for it. But that goes with fear. Why do we hold back a lot? Because we're just too scared of what the result may be. I'm too scared to to get rejected by this job. I'm too scared to let my family down, to let my partner down. I'm too scared to, you know, be out. And it's just like, bro, if you have no fear, you'll try everything. Any business, any, any, uh, something that's been holding you back, whatever it may be, maybe, maybe it's cutting hair, makeup, starting a business, maybe f- getting oil. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> What's stopping you? I know. Um, too young, too old already. Too young. Too old, no. this guy. 
definitely not too young. It's <laughs> crazy. Um, man. but yeah, I think just that knowing that I won't fail at life, it takes away the fear. But because we're here now, I mean, I think a little bit of fear does help us out. What about you? I'm still thinking about that. The brain still the processing. The brain still like. Good thing she has good it's eyes. It's hard. Man. Look at the eyes for the next ten <laughs> for the next ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's there. <laughs> Repeat the question. I know those are some tough ones. Hold on, we're running on That's like. That's the point of the internal ones, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, I'm like we. I don't know. We got. All right, we feel like I would be a, a, I would like to be a, a successful partner, but as in like partner to like my parents to relationship to friends i feel like i'm not connected as well because i just like being isolated when i want to be isolated and then obviously at times i like to be social but i feel like i should have a better balance into it what about you my boy i'd probably start a business not sure go. what kind of business am i being 100% Oil. honest no, actually, no, 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 not, not oil. <laughs> I probably have uh, poder to produce some type of clothing line for me. You know, that's probably what I do. Just put power instead. Just power, power, powerful. P P A W. We're bilingual. Power. Right, no, but yeah, I'd yeah. probably start some type of like clothing brand. Boom, we back. Thank you to our sponsor, Pepe, for allowing us to use the office space. Shout out to that guy. Oh shit, I see you, my boy. A sponsor, <laughs> my boy. You're getting an invoice after this. What you talking about? <laughs> yeah, for free. Who should I send it to? ATTL. Or Chris Sourap. Uh ATTL, please. Um actually wait. ATTL already paid for the hotel in San Diego return. Nice. Say less. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, ATTL. Running it back. back. All right. Question number four, five, six, four, four whatever. Yeah. She still didn't answer. I'm still waiting oh, on that last one. I'm hold just up. waiting on that so last one. So if there was something <laughs> we were talking about businesses, um one thing I've always wanted to do was flip houses. I've always wanted to invest in houses so that I know that my future generation will always be good. Yeah, you know? I can help you with that. Let's do some work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being serious. Let's start it. No, yeah. Let's do it. Buying a house. Why are you wearing two socks? Stop. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to lie. Um, it has a man. hole in there. <laughs> on this side, look. Oh. <laughs> she a bother. It matches with her sock. If you guys want to donate, so I can buy some real socks. <laughs> Nike leads, please. <laughs> let, them, let them hold. All right, where are we at? Next question. That's let's, where we're at. Let's do this. So, when you're successful, do you guys ever feel or fear people would use you or will use you the more successful you become? Yeah. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? I do you allow them to use you or? It's quick. I don't think you will ever allow anyone to use you. I feel like you you try your best to do your best judgment on people. Obviously, the more you get to the top, you got to be careful and be a lot smarter um, who's around you. But I don't think anyone will like intentionally like if someone I, if I know someone's using me, I'm not going to just keep letting him, you know, or letting her. Um, but I think you should just become a lot more wiser. And I wouldn't say, like, um, I still feel like I'm being interviewed right now. <laughs> I don't know. What if What if you know that person needs help? Are you helping but, them so or are you letting them use so you? So that's a different, like, question because if they need help, yes, you can help them, but help them get up on their feet. But it's like you got to put in the work to get on your need, feet. But everybody needs help. Yeah, so of course, it's everybody what, needs yeah. help. But that's why you got to, like, you yourself, obviously you're not going to go help every single person that comes up to you on All the right, street. So, so check this out. So uh, being Latinos, right, I feel like everybody has, in everybody listening right now that's Latino or has a successful parent in their household, if they're the only parent or family member in their family that's successful, who do they come to for help? From the person that's successful. Hey, I need you. Can you let me borrow some bucks? Can you help me with this? Perfect example. Yeah, the the quinceañeras come around. Can you be a padrino for this? Madrina for that? You know they're use, not using you, but you know their intentions, but they're giving it to you in a different way of them saying, hey, I, need, I just need your money. Yeah. We haven't and, talked in years, but I just need your money. And, then, and most of the time, it's not reciprocated. 
hey, let me, can you let me borrow? The, I'm having a hard time right now. Don't have a lot of work. I need to, I need to pay my rent this month. Okay, cool. Pay me back uh, whenever you can. Month two, month three. You know, I feel like the more you help people, the more they take advantage of it because they they know you're a good person. They know you're going to help. So it, it goes back to who who's in your circle when you started this whole journey, right? We're we're good people. We have we have good intentions, but don't let that don't let that be confused to, yo, I'm you can use me whenever you want. Like I'll be there whenever you want. Like no, mm-hmm. you fucked me over once. It is what it is. Like I can't I can't allow you back no more. I guess that's when you set your own boundaries, though, because I mean, like, okay, since we're talking about like people taking advantage of you, right? Yeah. So like, I have a situation where my mom helps one of my cousins out. He's in jail. And he's not really helping himself out. Like, he's not doing anything to try to get himself out either. And, like, I get mad all the time. And I'm like, why are you helping him? You're, you're enabling him. You know, like, enough there. But I get it from her own heart. Like, she's going to keep helping. Yeah, I feel like she also needs to put the boundary on herself. So I just feel like it's just boundaries. Like, yeah. you need to learn. Obviously, there's some people when it's, like, blood, it's kind of harder. I understand that. But sometimes it's, like, the peop- like blood is going to take more advantage of you. So it's up to you, like, family is family, I understand that, mm. but it's, you can also say no to them. I know they're not going to, like, talk shit after your tia's are going to be like, oh, you know, secre, <laughs> you know, he doesn't want to help anymore and stuff. But it's like, we all have, like, our oper- our own opportunities. Like, yeah, I can't keep sure. feeding everybody else and inspect me to grow. It's like, okay, yeah, like, I wouldn't mind helping you out. Here's a little bit, here's that. But with that, try to get on your feet. Do something with it. Yeah, it's like, um, this, I'm, I'm sure... I mean, I think guys go through a lot, go through this a lot by when they let people borrow money and then they see that person out there and about, you know, spending that money like, (laughs) damn, motherfucker, don't you owe me 100 bucks, 200 bucks? And it's just there is a there's an old movie and it says, oh, I'm like, dude, I'm he owes me. I'm gonna go beat him up. He's like, stop. How much did you let him borrow? Forty dollars. Oh, you you literally spent forty dollars to lose this friend. Do you really want to go fight him on that? Or does those $40 already, like, you lost him. It's fine. Now he's out of your life. Because he's never going to come and say, hey, let me pay you back now. Yeah. You know? Because it, some, they, it's a little shameful, right? Like, if you owe people money, hey, <laughs> they won't come and, hey, bro, let me pay you back. Mm-mm. They ain't going to tell you until you, and then they get more mad that you go and, like, obras. Hey, bro, you mind if you give me back those fit? Damn, for te huitas? That we does in serio, so it's just like, damn, bro. Like, you let someone borrow money, just know that's not coming back. That's why, like, I mean, shit. I think this happened like, ugh, about two years ago. I went to high school with this guy, whatever, and just random. Hey, bro, do you mind if you let me borrow like two hundred bucks? Like, I need to buy diapers for my kid. Mind you, I never talked to this guy after high school. I'm like, bro. <laughs> He's like, dude, I got a new job next week. Like, I'll, I'll pay you back. I'm like, I, I can't trust people a lot like that, right? I think, in the, simple question, what do you guys consider a real friend? Someone that's been with, with you through everything. Like, um, yeah, someone who's been there with you through the thick and thin, who's been there with you. I wouldn't say necessarily, like, a long-term fan, like, someone they know over years because you can also outgrow them. I feel like a friend is someone that's there for you whenever you need it, you know, through thin thick. I feel like a real that's friend. A yeah, I feel like a real friend would be someone who you don't need to be talking to that person every single day because they understand where you guys are in life and doing your own thing. But when you guys do need to, like, reconnect, you guys don't need to have any excuses for one one another. Just know that we are thinking about you when we're doing our our own thing. And then no matter what, whatever life is at, if you're across the world, we're going to come back together and come back to where we we just were like a couple months ago, you know? What do you consider a real friend? Someone you can trust. Someone you can trust pretty much and be able to tell them all the good things and the bad things going on in your life and know that they would never use it against you in any way, shape or form. Because there are people that you consider your friends, and when things go sour, 
they just try and use that against you. So I think a real friend is someone you can trust with. So, so yeah. I, what about you? Just that, like, I think for me to consider you a real friend, like, I got your back 24-7. Call me whenever you need. Like, I'll be there. Like, we got to go through some certain things, bro. Like, and this is just things in life that just happens. Like, when I'm at my lowest, you're at your lowest. When I definitely need help and I'm out and bad, like, and you're there for me and you're willing to help me and expect nothing back from me but want to really see me do good, okay, cool. Like, they say, in order for me to consider you a real friend, either you land in the hospital, you land in jail, or a life crisis. Then you'll see who really is there. But until then, it's like, it's really hard for me to call someone a friend because how many f- friends have we had that shit gets tough, they turn around and they start saying some stuff about you or they're not around no more. So I think, were they really friends or were they just seasonal friends? Are they real life friends or, again, for the moment type of friends? Acquaintances. Acquaintances, yeah. And we get, um, Chris said it like, ooh, years ago, like, Lose a person, but never lose a lesson. I appreciate you for being here in my life, but I, I can't go that way. I got to go this way. That's your journey. This is my journey. It's just not aligning anymore. So in order for you, like, for your friend to be considered friends, yo, you don't, you know you don't need them from anything. I think that's a big one, though. They don't expect nothing back, or you don't expect nothing back. That's, yeah. like, the true friendship. Re- realistically, being very honest, like, we don't need each other for anything we got ourselves but when we come together we just know we bring a certain type of energy for each other and support that we're like bro this is a match like uh we're at the at the mixer on sunday and one of the guys was like damn bro like you carry a big team like why is that i'm like bro that's my family like they've been when we had zero when real dude be real deep (laughs) yeah like when we had zero when we have when we didn't have blue checks to now having a little bit of good things, they're, everybody's still around. Everybody carries their own weight. But they're like, damn, that's fucking dope. I was like, yeah, find yourself those type of people that don't just come when everything is, is nice, when everything is popping now. Or they only have something positive to say when you're not in the room. Mm. And they'll keep that good name when you're talking about someone else. Yeah. yeah. That's a real friend. When they talk about it, when you, they start talking about it about you and that friend defends you, hey, don't talk about him. That's my guy. That's a real friend. You know? What's a real friend to you? I already said it. Yeah, you did? Yeah, you did? Yeah, damn. <laughs> Space that was crazy. She's on three hours of sleep. She was three hours of sleep. I told you guys. I told you guys. From the first, get, from the she's, she's probably one of those that sleeps with her eyes she, open. She's yeah, like, she's a... Uh, and she's snoring. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question, Pop. <laughs> what are your thoughts on... Revenge. Oh. And I'm only going that. I'm going down that route because, again, y'all mentioned sometimes friends or quote unquote said friends like to talk bad about you behind your back. Mm. How do you Mm. feel about that? Do you you get back at them? Like, do you talk back? I think your our initial like sentimiento is, "Mm, let me say some shit now. Let me get this shit off my chest. Right. But when you're starting to mature as a person, you understand that what are you doing? You know, why are you going to add to that fire? Because now we're going to get into a back and forth. Now I'm going to respond. Now you're going to respond. And I'm gonna, there's, it's never ending. Now you're entertaining the circus. You be, you, you're entertaining the clown. You're becoming a part of the circus. There's no winning there. I think the biggest revenge is just not saying a word and just keep it in your lane. Like, again, I think that's... <sighs> It has a fine line because at the end of the day, like, they may say something that really affects you. It's like, yo, like, you don't want me to respond. The moment I respond, it's over. Because now everybody has skeletons in the closet. You don't want those shits to come out. But if you're, like, really seeking out the revenge, like, dude, don't do that. Like, you know, put put the good the good energy into the world. Put, put the good vibras out there, you know. After you're said and done, if you do seek that revenge, like, are you happy with yourself? Or do you just become like that person that was willing to do whatever they did to you? Now you just did it back to them. Yeah, I feel like revenge is just putting bad energy, like how you said. 
And I feel like you shouldn't be giving that time. You shouldn't be letting that person stupid to their to their level. Like, be, show revenge by being su- successful and proving them wrong. I feel like that that would be the best revenge. And at least at least for me personally, I wouldn't just be wasting my time again. Like I I gave you my time. Something happened between it. You wasted that time. I'm not gonna do it again by sh- like giving you more attention. You know. You were gonna say yeah. something with your chest. You were I say was. Something. That you were was ready. Oh, I was gonna say with my chest. Honestly, I believe God is gonna handle it for me. That's all I gotta say. He got my back. So, do you believe everything happens for a reason? Of course. I feel like everything that's done behind my back will come to light eventually. And if it doesn't, it's gonna, it's gonna, um, it's not gonna bother me, and it's gonna affect that person other more, even more, like. I've, I've witnessed it myself. Like, I could have got revenge on someone, and I didn't. And I just, like, you know what? I let it go. I let it go. And g- They're going to be like, why Why isn't she reacting? Yeah, like, why like, aren't they reacting? They're going to mess up their own, own lives by getting mad that yeah, I'm not exactly. mad. And then, like, you wonder why people don't start losing friends so often, why it becomes a habit. And it's just like, why is that? You know, we talk about, like, friends when they talk bad about you like damn like who are you as a person that allows other people to say that shit about you right like if for whatever reason you did me dirty so be it that's how you feel you're entitled to your feelings i'm not saying they're right i'm not saying they're wrong you're just entitled to them right feel how you feel it is what it is but um how we said the other day is this i'd rather you tell me in person that you don't like me than to come and lie to me and shake my hand and be at my table when you know at the end of the day, when you turn around, you're not going to feel that same way. It's not reciprocated. So I'd rather you hurt me by telling me the truth than lie to me by trying to keep me happy. That was a bar, Loki. That was a <laughs> bar. <laughs> and I don't know. I just think that like at the end of the day, too, whatever energy you put out, you're going to get back. So if you're out here intentionally hurting someone, like best belief is going to come back to you and someone's going to hurt you. Even more. Oh, like, it's going to double back. That and best believe they karma. will. Yeah. Karma. <laughs> Dude, Damn. karma got it. No, the karma's a... Karma's a real... <sighs> yeah, I felt that <laughs> one. I felt that one before. Yeah. Then, what other question? Are you guys missing anyone right now? <laughs> Let me get out the room real quick. <laughs> he's like, he's in the room. <laughs> I don't see nobody in the room. You don't see God. You don't see God. <laughs> That's crazy. God you don't see God. I don't see him because he's in my heart. He's Ooh. within me. Ooh. Ooh. Did I say it? <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was a good say. That was a good say. That was good. <laughs> wow. I'm missing anybody. Ooh, I'm sweating. Hmm. <laughs> I am. A couple people. I'm not gonna lie. But I think it's more like, I don't know, friendship-wise, I feel like I'm missing a lot of my friends, or I miss people's friendship before whatever happened. Are you missing the way they made you feel at a certain point in your life? Yes. Like, I feel like whether anyone who did me wrong or not, like, I feel like it, all my people that enter my life we always started as a friendship, good connections, you know? Yeah. So I feel like I would met, I miss that initial connection with people mm-hmm. with certain people what about you what about you i miss nobody mm. cold hearted cold hearted cold blooded okay but why it's cold baby. okay but why do you why would you say you don't miss anybody and you gotta like do you feel you have to be that cold blooded sort of scent no that's that's a crazy part like i don't even think about it i don't like it just comes naturally like i'm so like like i'm just going that didn't Do you have feel like you're too much on the go to really like stop and think about other people in a sense of like, yeah. oh, I miss them? Or is it like you're just so busy? You're like, oh, I know they're doing good. I'll check on them later or something. Like, I don't miss them. A little bit of both. But like the people that I wouldn't say I don't talk to anymore, it's just more so like, that's cool. Like you're doing your own thing. Like I don't have time to be entertaining that either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, like I don't, I don't miss somebody. I don't miss any particular moment. What about you? You miss anybody? The funny thing is, is, yeah. I mean, I see her pretty often. 
It's my sister. <laughs> I'll yeah. 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 build a team. Nah, my, my business. Thank no, uh, it's my sister, and even though I see her often, I miss who she was before she got married and had kids. I feel like she used to be so happy, and we had a pretty great relationship. I could pretty much go up to her and uh, talk to her about anything. She was my best friend. No matter what, I'm still going to consider her my best friend, but I just miss who she was prior to the marriage and the kids. That was deep. Damn. That was deep. Yeah. I think for for me, that question just goes in, like, there's different levels to it. Because how you said, like, I miss certain people, certain relationships that I've had because of what our relationship used to look like, whether, like, bro, from... This before all this shit, too. I missed that. And I was just talking about this the other day, yesterday, where it's like everything that I'm doing now, all this success that we're having now, you know, the whole journey that we're in now, is it totally worth it knowing how, what I had to lose to come to, to get to this point? Like, if I knew this had to happen, like, would I still want to keep doing this? And it goes back to that same thing I said earlier, where it's like, man... I came so far along in my life, but who's not here no more with me? You know what I mean? So that's one. And then the other one, you know, I feel like the month of October has really put everybody in that emotional roller coaster, right? Like you have the, the, some highs, you have some lows. And the reason why mine is a low, because I do miss my best friend. I do miss that... Um, Two years ago that our life changed and life was a lot easier, so to say. And, you know, I think the worst thing when someone passes away is how I was telling you. I hate when someone tells me, oh, don't worry. They're up there looking after you. Oh, don't worry. It's okay. Things happen for like, no, it's not that. It ain't supposed to be that way. It was never supposed to be this way. Do I understand that God has a reason and for it that he needed him more than we did? Yeah, I understand that now, but I don't want to hear that, oh, it's okay. It's not okay. If it was okay, then everything, everybody would be here still. And everybody that has once lost someone understands that it, <laughs> it that was perfect, you know? Do you feel like, follow up for like both of you guys, do you feel like, uh, let me zone into you for your, your sister. Do you feel like, I'm sure you guys love each other, yeah, obviously. No matter what. But do you feel like, say, you asked her, hey, why can't we be the best friends we were, how we were before? If you ask her that and she says yes, do you feel like that same lo like love, quote unquote love, or that same relationship would be the same as it was before? Or do you feel like it's forced now? I don't think anything would be forced. I think now her priorities are just completely different, you know? So even though we could probably go back to a really good relationship, or whatever, we don't have the time for each other that we did back in the day, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm working What if you made the time? I mean, I'm going to be honest. I don't know how I can make more hours in the day, but I, do I want her to go back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would I like the relationship to go back to what it was, like, maybe 10 years ago? Absolutely. Is it going to? Probably not. You know? Damn. What about you? What about me? You feel like that um, that person, that those people, before all this, do you feel like if it can happen now, would that love, that relationship, that same connection be the same now? Try and rekindle that or try and remake it again in this moment in time, would that be the same? But if, do you feel like it will be forced? I think if them, I think because things happen the way it happened, I have a different set of fire under me where there was a, there's a quote that I heard the other day and it was like, fear the person that lost everything because when he lost everything, fear went out the door too. So I've been at my worst. My worst isn't losing my possessions. Now I could, we can redo this, right? The worst moments I've had is being at church and laying my brother to rest, laying my grandpa to rest. I died there in those days. You know, 2015, losing my, I died that moment. There's a part of me that got buried when they went under. If they would still be here, 
I feel like I'd be happier. But right now I'm I'm content because, man, there's a fire under us. There's a fire under me, meaning I got to make them proud, right? I got to make sure that when they're looking down and then they can see that I'm doing my thing. But I got to make sure that when I walk to, through those gates of heaven, I'm able to have the conversation with them and be like, I did it. And I did it for you guys. Or even in, in a... Maybe some people believe in it or not, but when you're dreaming and sometimes the people that you miss come and visit you. And like I've had those moments where, you know, I I get to see my uncle and I hug him. And I'm, I start crying. I'm like, dude, like I missed you. I, it's been so long. And then you wake up, you're like, put me back, bro. Like, give me one more second. Like, let me just tell you how much I love you, how much I missed you. What would you tell him? Say you were in that dream. I need you. I need you for so long in my life. Now, I miss you. You know, when you you lose somebody, you lose a part of you. And, and I know when that happened, I lost a part of me. And, like, if I could, like, if I could talk to my brother, like, I wish I could have done more. I don't know what happened. I don't know what was going through your head. I miss you. I need you. Because there's days where I don't want to be here. But because of you, I'm out here thriving. I'm out here I'm out here doing it. Because I know all of us have put in a, a, a fucking front of smiles, even though we never wanted to smile, even though we don't want to, even though we're burning inside, hurting inside. I'm going to smile because I don't need you guys to, to feel that for me. But I love you. I miss you. I love you. And I can't wait to see you one day. And how me and him always say, that'll be in 50 years from now. Nah, never. That's too small. That's 70. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> You're like, Damn, give me, give me 60, you know. But it just happens, bro. I know, I know death is a part of life, and um, it happens in life. It's just you have to understand that, damn, maybe, maybe the power above needed them more than you needed them. And you have to understand that at some point. And I think I understand that now because the way my brother left, the way my grandpa left, the way my uncle left, we're able to speak their name and help people. So they leave a legacy. And one thing I've <clears throat> I said about my brother, the moment it happened is, I promise you no one will ever forget your smile and your name. And I will speak it in every room. And, you know, now that we're able to do, like, the public speaking a little bit, like, you know, the city of West Covina knows why I do this. You know, now um, the panel that we are in just recently knows why I do this. And now all the people that follow us know why I do this. And, you know, I think that's what it is, making the people that left, making them proud. Because we at least have the power to breathe, the power to see, the power to live. And the blessing to wake up. We owe it to them because we can do that. Appreciate everybody uh, still with us. You know, tell us life is how we do it. But, man, we know for quotes. There is, I mean, I started writing a lot. Not writing, but mm -hmm. I was writing. But also uh, screenshotting a lot of them. There's one. Tell me how you guys feel about this one. Making yourself happy again is the biggest comeback. Yes. Always. It's like when you finally, I think it's such like a self like warmth when you start being happy and within yourself again, like you, your light comes back, you know, and it's like you're able to share that light with other people. Yeah. So it's like everyone needs to be happy with themselves. And I mean, how we said earlier, like we've been in such in a dark place for so long and in the cloud over our head for so long, like. When do we get that rain of sunshine? Like, how does it, you know, even when you've been hurt so many times, how do you know what true love is now? Because you've been hurt again and again. And you're just like, damn, like, I give this person all of me all the time. And what do I get at the end? So finding that peace once again is the biggest comeback. Thinking, oh, comeback is coming back from rehab, right? After breaking your ankle. <laughs> <laughs> broke, actually broke it twice. Twice. <laughs> um, 
Check, check this one out. Someday someone might come into your life and love you the way you've always wanted. I pray for that every day. Honestly, I pray for that every day. Just because I know I can love and I have such a big heart. And I put myself in situations where I love someone else way more than I have been loved back. Yeah. And yeah, don't get me wrong. There's times where I'm like, oh my God, why does nobody love me? And I'm in like self pity. And, but I'm like, no, like, I know love. God put love in my heart. And I know He's going to provide me with that same love back. He's going to bring me someone, you know? He just, wait. I feel like right now I'm in a season of waiting as well, yeah. where it's like, be patient because your person's coming and that person's going to love you the exact way you need to be loved. How do you feel about that? <laughs> What's love? What is love? Got what is do, love? Got to do. Got to do. All right. I want you to react to this one. I'm not reacting. I'm <laughs> yeah, not reactive no. at all. All right. Tell me your thoughts after this. For both of you. Okay. I never faked I love you or I miss you. The only thing I ever faked is that I'm okay. Yeah. 100%. I feel like everyone always puts this front like I'm okay, you know? I think it's more of a pride thing, though. Or, I don't know, because sometimes I say I'm okay even when I'm not just because I don't want to bother people. And I don't want to worry somebody, right? Yes. That's I feel why like I don't post a lot of my things. Like, sometimes I'm down, <laughs> and I'm down bad, but I don't I don't post anything, right? For that same reason. I yeah, I feel like at least the people around me, every time I post something sad, they're like, are you okay? Exactly. So you don't need a 5150 yeah. real quick. I'm like, no, you guys, I'm chilling. Like, <laughs> Yeah, like the video I posted yesterday, like everybody's like, dude, you're not alone. You'll be okay. I'm like, don't like, don't get me wrong. Like, I did have a moment today, but I'm not down bad. But I just know that someone out there is feeling this way with no voice, and they just need someone to relate to, to repost, to like. Like, damn, that's how I've been feeling. And it's like, yeah, like, we'll say it. We're not afraid of it, right? There's a, is it, there's a question, and I sent it to you guys earlier in the week, mm -hmm. but it was, what do you value now that you didn't before? Time. I feel like my time, to me now, I feel like I was spending it in all the wrong places. And I had to take a step back because I realized it wasn't doing anything for me. And as hard as that was, I think now I value more time um, with the people that really care about me because I was putting in time into people that could care less, you know. And um, it took me a it took me a hard realization. I had like my best friend tell me like I can't remember. I was so hurt one day, and it's like she said, "Why are you so focused on that one person that's making you feel shitty?" But yet, everyone that else is that's giving you love and supportive, you're ignoring. Mm. So it's just like, oh, dang. Like, yeah. So now I value that more. I put my time into the people that vest back in me. What about you? Same. No, honestly. Like, BS aside, uh, time with the people that I love. And then a lot of the time with my parents. You know? Yes. Oh my god. Especially when you see those TikToks, right? Oh my god. I'm pretty sure you've seen them. Not just them. that. You're I like you look at your parents and like, I obviously just had a birthday, so I'm like, oh my god, I feel so old. I'm 24, and I look at my parents. I'm like, wait, if I'm getting older, they're also getting older, exactly. and I'm just those like, are the TikToks I'm talking and then about. there's times too where like, obviously, I'm trying to do so much for myself. I do feel selfish. I'm like, dang, I don't spend so much time with my family. So now yeah. when I do. I am around my family. I'm like, everybody got their phones. Like, we're spending family time right now. Or like, yeah. I'm like, why are you guys arguing? Like, we hardly even, we all live in the same house. Yeah, we hardly even know what's going on in each other's lives. And I feel like lately I've been telling my parents more. We grew up like that, you know. We grew up with very, like, everyone's doing their own things. Yeah. My parents were young parents, so they were working all the time. We are always with, like, the vecina and stuff. She was taking care of us. So it's like, now that we're all doing our separate things, like, when we come together, it does feel a little bit lonely because it's like, dang, like, you're my brother, you're my sister, but do I really know what's going on in your lives? And it's not till like we actually spend time with each other and we're like, oh wait, like yeah. I grew up with you, but I don't really know you anymore. And it's kind of sad, but it's now starting to change that perspective of like, you know what, let me actually take the time with them because life is short. I mean, 
and we're only getting older, so yeah. it's scary. That's what they say. Tell the people that are in your life that you love them, you care about them, and how much they mean to you because you don't know if the next day everybody will still be here. Because what do you get left with the, you get left with the, man, I should have told them. Man, I should have hugged them. Mm-hmm. Man, I I should have had one more. I should have been there. Right? And that's, again, the what ifs. The what ifs will always kill you. And the I should have and I could have will always be in the back of your head and, man, and make you feel miserable because maybe you could have. Because uh, I don't know if you, you guys seen that video. Like, how do you know how good of a person you are? Do you guys know, like, when do you'll be told that? I feel like when you're done, ev- your eulogy. Everyone's yeah. gonna say, "Oh, they were such a, a great, great uncle." Yeah, you know, you'll find you'll find out how good of a person you are when you're be put into the floor to the ground. And it's sad because it's a little too late. I, I want to like, hear that I wanna now. Know. I want to hear that now. Yeah, give me my fucking flowers now. I don't want right. to hear it Give them to me. I don't want to hear it then. And um, and again, it's how we are. Like, I'm going to tell you how proud of, I am of you, of you, of everybody in our team now because I need you to hear it now. I don't need, I don't want you to hear it when you're up in heaven and you're not, I'm not physically talking to you. I want you to hear it right now. So whatever, whatever uh, pride that you have or you can't say I love you or whatever, nah, that's too, no, 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 tell them. They need to hear it. Maybe the your friends, your family, your whoever needs to hear that I love you and I'm proud of you more than you know, because maybe they don't hear it enough from anyone else. And unfortunately, unfortunately, but fortunately, sometimes we get the I love yous and I'm proud of yous from the people we least expect it from instead of the people we always wanted it from. And that's what hurts. Damn. That was Damn. that was <laughs> um, that was like ten quotes for real. Wait, I do have a question. Ben, like going off a little bit, like right. about like telling um people how much you love them and you miss them before they gone. Yeah. So obviously, there's that part. How do you feel about holding grudges? Mm. Like, what if you're holding on to a grudge with someone that's honestly probably really petty and you know what? Honestly, because that's been like so big on me, like. I have such a big heart to the point where, like, people can do me dirty. But at the end of the day, it's like, I do not want to hold a grudge with you in case something happens. Like, we're good in my books. Like, God this. bless your God way. This. Let me answer this. God, this. Go for it. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. I'm going to answer this with a quote that I had for today. All right? Just set you up. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Are you? <laughs> That's not how you have you. Oh. <laughs> You're like, I'm a shooter. Wait, it's up. Uh, this one, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I know how to play ball. Hold up. I was shooting hoops, actually, before I got here. Yeah, yeah, sure. I was. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> ah, no, just kidding. Sometimes you have to accept that a person's chapter in your story might be over. You can't continue the story if you're stuck reading the same chapter over and over again. Bro. Matame. Mic drop. Matame. You just talked to my whole life right now. I think that answers wow. your question about holding grudges. I, you honestly got to learn how to leave people where they're at. And as yeah. much as it hurts, you can't hold that grudge against them. Honestly, I feel like people are, we're human. We all make mistakes. You know, like not everybody's going to paint you. Everyone, there's going to be someone that's going to see you as a villain. You know, you can't take that to heart. But yeah. you also like, you got to just let people no, just know people are going to be human just as much as human you what's are. That, what's that, uh, that quote that when people tell, when people start talking about how much of a monster you are or how much you've hurt them, they have to remind them and also say in what chapter did they make you in because we act because of how people treated us. You hurt me, that person hurt me. Well, now the way I'm going to progress is I'm not going to be this loving. I'm going to be a nice guy, but don't take advantage of this no more. Don't take advantage of my loving and caring heart because you ain't going to like that person that comes after this, right? You hurt me once, bro, never again. I cannot allow you Mm -hmm. back in. I can't hold a grudge because if I hold a grudge, that means I'm still giving you part of my time, part of my emotions. I can't do it. I did that. It's like saying that one thing is like, it's like trying to get poison someone, but you're drinking it. Because you're still holding on to it. Yeah, so I let go of that resentment because 
I truly hope and I wish and one day you find that peace within yourself. I just can't help you and I can't be a part of that journey no more. You know what? Not everybody that not not everybody that's in your life right now is meant to go to the next level with you because some may not be ready to go and it's okay. You know, you can't bring everybody that, you know, they're not willing to walk on their own two feet. You know, I'm not going to hate you for it. It's going to hurt that I'm leaving, but it's going to hurt me more staying here and us, both of us not progressing in the way we need to, that I know we can. And it's just like any like uh, loving relationship, boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, maybe you want to get to the next step, but your partner is, is ready to just stay there because that's all they know. And, you know, some, some people love too hard and I'm going to love you for the, you can't do that. Mm-mm. It can only go so far. You know, are you in a household of, that's full of love and peace? Or are you in a toxic household where you're just like, I know he's going to change. I know she's going to change. How much are you fooling yourself now? There was a... How the Lulu are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the, the Charlemagne uh, quote that he said that your, your childhood self wants love, but your teenage self wants revenge, and your adult self wants peace? And that Ooh. is a cycle of of healing. So it's just like all that, right? Like we're trying to heal our, our childhood trauma that we that we had. And then everybody that did us wrong through our teenage years, you have some resentment against those people and whoever hurt you. And now as adults, all we want is like, damn, mm-hmm. quiero respirar. I want to breathe. Yep, teenager me, just fighting everybody. Dude, I had some real anger issues, but I had to take a step back and be like, "You're doing too no much." No more anger issues. No, sure? honestly, I'm pretty, I'm pretty chill. I feel like I'm not gonna lie though. I had to hit that one point where like my light switch went off one day, <laughs> went red. But after that, I was just like, I don't think I can ever get to that level again. All right, what is one thing that you understand now that was a hard pill to swallow? That people come and go. That people come and go. And honestly, I had to. I have to thank one of my friends. Uh, we got into a little a little tiff in Vegas, maybe like ten years ago. And she literally was just like, "People come and go." And at the moment, I was like, "Oh shit!" Like that's it. Like we're cut off. But. Looking back, I mean, we're friends now, right? Obviously, we made up right away. But it's true. The more you think about it, and I think the more we are in this environment, I've learned that people do come and go. And you have to be mm-hmm. okay with that. Mm-hmm. It's going to hurt. But at the end of the day, it's it's what happens. What about you? I think my biggest pill I had to swallow was definitely, like, the people you love the most or you think loves you the most will hurt you and it's not always a bad thing you know like at the end of the day again you got to take people for we're human we're all human you know like I feel like the people who have hurt me the most are the people where I was like dang like even my own family who had hurt me you know where I was just like I would have never thought you would say that to me you know but um taking myself like I love like being a bigger person and just taking myself like as a personal view, out of taking a step back, trying to see it from a different perspective, um, it's just more of like, you know, what? in that mo- heat of the moment, that person was mad too. I understand. Yeah. There's times where I get mad, you know, and it's like you also gotta understand people have a, a different moral compass than you. Not everyone is gonna have the same moral compass, so it's like saying like, oh, why would you ever do that? I would never do that to you. Well, guess what? Because me and you don't have the same moral compass, so it's like, how can I expect? me out of you when no one can be me. Mm. Damn. All right, you ready to wrap it up with the quotes? You guys got quotes? Did you use yours already? I used my quote. (laughs) All right, and right now in your heart, what is one message that you would want everybody to know after all the growth you've made this year? After all the growth? um, Sorry, you said one quote or yeah. like advice? Advice, quote. Honestly, 
well, my personal thing that I have, like, really growth from was obviously getting closer to God, finding what works for me. Um, yeah, just, like, find your purpose. Honestly, it's just everyone needs to find their purpose, whether it's, you know, a higher power, yeah. you know, just in a, a future, a goal. I think, um, yeah, everybody just needs something to look forward, especially I feel like nowadays with the, everything going on in the world, um, like, you just... Yeah. You got to believe in something right now, you know, be kind to people and just be that light right now. I feel like the whole world needs that. Yeah. I think the one that I wrote down was when comparing yourself to others, keep in mind that there will always be someone who is working harder in a better position than you and in a in better shape than you. But never forget that there is someone behind you wishing they had your life and the opportunities you have and the blessings so don't be too hard on yourself. It's okay. You're on the right track. Be patient. Show yourself a little bit of, of um, what's that word? Grace. Show yourself Show, a little bit of grace, yeah. Show yourself a little bit of grace. Be kind to yourself, you know. This world's already hard enough, you know. Why make it harder by being hard on yourself? Thanks. Like, the best thing you can do is, like, the easiest thing you can do is be nice to yourself. Honestly, it doesn't take much. The same way you're like, oh, I feel ugly today. Just wake up and be like, you know what? I look good. You know? Ch change the perspective. Change your mindset. Change your life, right? Mm -hmm. In order for life to change, you need to change. Exactly. Damn. Negative thoughts bring negative outcomes. Positive thoughts bring Shit, positive Shit, time to go outcomes. get some fresh air because we dying in I here. I know, I'm sweating but in here. Man, ho hopefully this helps somebody. Ho hopefully, if you listen to the whole podcast, again, appreciate you. Love you guys. Man, we stay authentic. We stay ourselves. We stay true to ourselves. We don't fake the funk. And we, how we said earlier, if anybody talks bad about you, don't give them the luxury to respond to them. Because if you entertain the clown, you become part of the circus. Bars. Shout out Kevin Gates. He said that, not me. <laughs> Let's go. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, cookie season. Stories, scary stories to tell in the dark. Go. What's your scariest story? Damn, my grandma has Alzheimer's. La no. Llorona. <laughs> <laughs> and then La Llorona's her. My, my grandma has Alzheimer's. And when I got home at two in the morning, she was talking to herself in a whole deep, deep voice. And I was scared for my life. Yeah. <laughs> That's your round, not just Halloween. Just cut this out. <laughs> just cut Let's this out. Just cut this out.